Welcome to our first video geared towards reviewing for the AP exam and uh, there's no more fitting of place to start than with limits and that's certainly the foundation on which all of calculus is built upon. All of our derivatives and integrals and even our series are built on this concept of a limit and so today I really want to break things down, go back to the basics and deepen our, our understanding of a limit and, and move beyond the idea of just getting a correct answer and being able to really visualize and appreciate what's taking place. Um, we're going to see. We're going to take two different approaches on the exam, and one being a graphical approach, and, and that's where we're going to start today. And specifically, we're going to see a lot of one-sided limits, just either approaching a, a certain x value from the left or the right. And then there's also what we call an analytic approach, and that's basically just today. Think of that as a non-graphical approach, if nothing else. It's kind of uh, the algebraic by hand approach. But uh, we're going to do a lot of work with the Hoppe talls. I would even I would go as far as to say maybe 80% of the ones we see on the exam are going to involve the Hoppe talls. And then we're also going to talk about limits that as x approaches infinity as well. And that's where we get into what we call our power fight. And we've had a lot of good practice with that lately. Because because of uh, the ratio test we've used when trying to prove an interval or find an interval of convergence. Hopefully this, I put this strange picture in here and uh, this is the, the look that many of us get on our face when we tackle a limit question and, and hopefully we won't look quite so goofy uh, over the next couple of days. So what is a limit? And, and my first uh, basic definition here is we're saying is uh, with regards to this picture is x gets closer and closer to the two. Okay, the height, and that's, I can't stress that enough, we're going to use that word a lot today, the height of the graph gets closer and closer to, well, in this case, four, and that's what we would call the limit. And it's all about what the height's getting closer to, whether it actually reaches that height or not is, is not important. Now, I wish we could, you could actually see me doing this on the board, but I like to put um, fingers on each side of the graph and approach, so as I come in from the left, uh, you know, I'm traveling in this way here, and I've got my finger actually on the graph. And as I come in from the right, I'm moving in this way. And I think if we if we actually, you know, put one of our fingers on each side of the graph and move closer towards two, we'll we'll locate that point. A um, couple of other things here. Basically, if we boil it down, I like to say that a limit is the intended height of a graph. What is it heading towards? What does it intend? to reach, okay, the intended height. I think that's a great word to use here. Um, also, um, big asterisks here, the limit doesn't actually care if the graph actually ever reaches this intended height, okay, so whether we get there or not is irrelevant. It's all about what their intentions are and, and where they're heading. What we're going to do here next is I'm going to give you a few graphs and uh, some one-sided limits and a general limit and ask you to hit the pause button, fill them in, and then come on back and hit play. Okay, so uh, as we approach one from the left side, I'm going to jump on the graph and I'm going to approach it this way. We're heading towards a height of 2. Now this graph actually did achieve or reach a height of 2, but that was irrelevant. Even if that was an open circle, I'd still say 2. As we approach one from the right side, I'm going to travel this way, and we're approaching an intended height of 4. Never did reach 4, but that doesn't matter. And then the overall limit here is we're just going to say it does not exist for the simple reason that the limit from the left did not equal the limit from the right. One of my very favorite graphs, kind of a squirrely rascal here, so go ahead, give it a try, and come on back. All right, approaching one from the left side looks like I'm approaching a height of 1. If I approach one from the right side, and again, just like I'm doing right now, do not be afraid to draw on these graphs during a test. Um, well, from the right side, we're also approaching a height of one. And then because these two rascals equaled each other, uh, we're going to say that the general limit here also equals one. Notice the fact that there was an open circle here did not change any of my answers with regards to a limit. Now, when we start talking about continuity here in, in another day, um, that's going to be a whole different ball game. And now we're going to start to pay attention to whether it's open or closed and whatnot. Um, as we approach 2 from the left side, I'm coming in this way. Looks like I'm approaching a height of 2. As I approach 2 from the other side, from the right side, we're approaching a height of 3. And because those two rascals are not equal, we'll say that the general limit does not exist. So hopefully you feel a little better with the graphical approach. And um, now we're going to talk, talk about the analytic approach. What if they don't give me a graph? What if they actually give me equations, which is more typical? Um, anytime they ask you to evaluate a limit, we always basically should start with direct substitution. We should plug in 
the A, substitute the A from both of these cases. But what's going to happen 99% of the time is you're going to end up getting 0 divided by 0. And that's what we call our indeterminate form because we are unable to determine what the limit is by direct substitution. So indeterminate form right there. And what Lahap et al. does is he swoops in and says, you know what, this limit is now equal to f prime of a divided by g prime of a. And most of the time that works, but if we did get 0 over 0 again, we could just take another derivative and another derivative. Uh, the key here is to set, think of the numerator and the denominator as separate functions, okay? When we talk about taking a derivative, we're not using the quotient rule at all. Um, the numerator and the denominator, think of them as separate functions. And which is really cool. I mean, you've done enough of these where you've seen the derivatives are usually pretty straightforward and friendly and quick and snappy, and, and then we can just plug in and go. Well, here's one of my favorite problems to use Lahav Fetals on. And I want you to go ahead again, interact with the problem, go ahead, hit pause, work it out yourself, and uh, come on back and see how I did it. All right. Uh, on the right off the bat, we substituted the zero into the uh, one that was given to us up here, and I did get zero over zero. Not a big shocker. In fact, I'd be shocked if you didn't get zero over zero right away on the AP exam. But then we so we took the first derivative of the numerator, took the first derivative of the denominator right here, and oh my gosh, I was this time I was slightly surprised that we still got zero over zero when I evaluated all of those rascals. So I said, okay, no big deal. We're allowed to take as many derivatives as we need. So we went to the the second derivative here in the orange one. One. And and quite the curveball here. We got zero over zero again. So we're going to do one another iteration of derivatives here. Here are the third derivatives. And let's see if I plug in zero. I got negative two plus eight, which was six all over one. So we're going to say the intended height of this graph right here. This guy's intended height as x gets closer and closer to zero is six. Oh, I got to tell you something really funny. I've been just talking to myself for about five minutes without the record button going. So uh, we're going to try this again. I think the record button's going now. We'll give it another whirl. Um, okay, we're going to move on. We're going to start talking about limits as x approaches infinity. And so uh, basically, as x approaches anything other than infinity, I use the Hoppe Tall's rule. And then when we do approach infinity, I start to consider my power fights and whatnot. But uh, I wanted to start off with some graphical images. And I think that's always a good place to start and build our uh, comprehension. But we've got the uh, we'll call this number one here, uh, sine x over x. And what's happening is x gets really, really huge and approaches infinity. The graph is funneling and converging on the x-axis. So we will say it's approaching a height of zero. Typically, when a graph is oscillating like this one is, we typically say that the limit does not exist because it's not approaching one finite number. But this one, it's, it's oscillating, but it is converging and funneling down towards zero. On our second one here, Again, we're working on the endpoints, or what we like to call the end behavior. What's happening as x gets extremely huge as we approach infinity? So we're talking about the right endpoint here, and it looks like the graph is approaching a height of 1. Whereas if we approach negative infinity, we're talking about this endpoint, and it's approaching a height of 3. So and when we have this discussion about end behavior, we want to totally disregard anything that's happening in here. This is just nonsense to us right now. It's something we're not concerned with. All right, now before... Uh, our third one here is uh, the most famous one, and hopefully the instant your eyes looked at this, this last graph, you instantly said y equals arctangent of x. We've worked with this rascal quite a bit. We saw this, um, this particular limit a lot when we did improper integrals, and we'll certainly see it some more as we approach May. So as x gets really, really huge, the graph is approaching a height of pi over 2, and then as x gets infinitely small, we'll call net, or I should say negative infinity here. The graph is approaching a height of negative infinity. So if nothing else today, I want you to become an expert on this graph right here and the endpoints and these limits. Okay, a couple of last comments on power fights, and we'll talk about order of dominance and, and so forth. But we want to say as X gets really large, you know, as X gets into the millions and beyond, okay, um, all inferior and I'll try to describe that word and what I mean by that. All inferior terms become irrelevant and can be deleted. All right. What does all that gibberish mean? All right. Let me scroll down here to the bottom. 
What do I mean by inferior terms? Okay, so let's consider this example right here. Um, let's do the limit as x approaches infinity. And let's say x cubed minus 100x squared plus 20x is all divided by 50x squared plus 8x. Okay, what do I mean by inferior points? Well, there becomes a point. Now, now, early on, when x equals 1, 2, 10, 100, you know, all those guys, you know, th you know, this term is fairly relevant, the 20x is fairly relevant, but when we get in x equaling like millions and beyond, this term, believe it or not, becomes irrelevant. It has very little impact on the graph to the point where we say it's, um, you know, inconsequential. And so I'm just going to delete all those rascals. And on the bottom, I'm saying the plus 8x is irrelevant. And so this function really becomes x cubed over 50x squared. All right. And you probably remember when we compare these two polynomials, and that's what we did primarily last year, is we kept it to just polynomials. And when we compare these polynomials, we'd say that this is certainly large over small. And so the limit is approaching, the graph is approaching a height of infinity. Sometimes we would say it doesn't exist because it's not approaching a finite number. Um, now the other thing I want to throw out there is, what if I gave you the same function, but I asked for the limit as x approaches negative infinity, and we'll boil it right down to x cubed over 5x squared. We don't see negative infinity very often, but in this case, you want to pay attention to whether your exponents are odd or even. Your numerator is an odd exponent, so if you plug in like negative a billion, you're going to get a negative huge number, okay? And on the bottom, you've got the squared, so you're getting a positive number. So you've got a negative on top and a positive on the bottom, so it is large over small. We are approaching um, infinity, but in this case, negative infinity because we had a negative divided by a positive in that case. Just a quick uh, review on the order of dominance here, and this is we we did really really well with this um, when we worked with the interval or the ratio test and the interval of convergence. But basically, we'd say uh, factorials. Whoops, we're going crazy here. Uh, factorials are the fastest growing, most mathematically dominant type of functions, and then exponentials are the next fastest rabbits. And then we start to, we'd say, then the polynomials fall into place here. And let's see, number four, we'd say logarithmic graphs. They're, they're like the turtles. And then the ultimate snail's pace here is either your sine or your cosine function. I don't want to lump tangent or any of the other trig functions into that group, but we'll just say sine and cosine finish last. So even if, all right, if you keep that in mind, so let's say I wanted the limit as x approaches infinity, and I gave you a constant over hmm, the ln of x. Okay, now this constant is obviously not growing at all these flatlining. So even though ln's a turtle, I would still say that this is small over large, and it therefore equals zero. However, if we went in and we snuck in, let's say we threw a 5x up here. Now, even though it's linear, not growing fast, it is fa growing faster than the natural log function. And now I would flip it, and I would say large over small, and the answer is infinity or does not exist. So I hope that helps. I hope you don't have that same funny look on our faces uh, that we posed on the first slide. And I will see you guys tomorrow.